Hey everybody, me Andrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our first episode here of Early Access Manor Lords. So big shout out to the developers and their team for reaching out to me to uh, provide a key. Very, very appreciative of that. I've had this uh, game wishlisted on Steam for a long time, as have many of you, as it is the most wishlisted game on Steam at the moment. So that is very, very exciting. But today we're going to go ahead and jump into a brand new game. And for this first episode, go ahead and try and make it to and through our first winter time. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Before we get too much farther, don't forget to hit the like button on the video. Also hit the comments down below. Let me know if you're excited for Manor Lords and all of that fun stuff. So our first thing here for the new game is gonna bring us right into our character and coat of arms creation screen. And you know, let's go ahead and pick our character first. I think uh, this fellow, where are we looking? That He looks a little mischievous. Not too sure about this guy here. How about this middle person here? And if we keep clicking on the name, they'll kind of give us some randomly um, generated name. Ditz. You know what? I, I love that. <laughs> let's be a Ditz. That's great. Uh, next over here is our coat of arms editor. And this is extremely detailed. I love how detailed uh, this is here. So if you wanted to, you can get uh, way, way into it with the coat of arms editor as far as uh, you have different fields here where you can change the uh, different symbols that you have on there and everything the different backgrounds for those symbols so yeah there is a whole whole lot uh, that we can get into uh, with that so let's go ahead I'm going to jump into um, making our uh, coat of arms real quick <laughs> tell you what there we go we are going to be the loyal order of the squirrels we must protect our squirrel friends and nuts at all times so <laughs> let's go ahead and move forward here uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the you have three different scenarios that you can jump into uh, the first one here the rise to prosperity is what we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, this is kind of just a uh, you don't have to worry about combat just kind of worrying about uh, getting your village uh, up to large town uh, settlement level so I, I do like that for our first one we will jump into combat uh, in the future episodes but yeah let's just kind of get a big old town and get us through the winter time right so we'll leave everything uh the template difficulty we'll leave that normal we'll leave all the goals and everything normal as well let's just go ahead and begin there very excited to jump in this is about my third playthrough the first two um, i did live over on tiktok to kind of get my bearings and everything but yeah i kind of have a grasp for the game a little bit here uh, so very excited to jump into our settlement. So we have a new message here. Whether others see trouble, where excuse me, where others see trouble, you see potential. These lands shall become rich and prosperous under your skillful management. Wishful thinking. Uh, reach the large town settlement level to achieve victory. Prosperity awaits. Indeed, it does. Let's go ahead and pause the game with spacebar right away, and we'll go ahead and back out here a little bit. Let's see what we're working with. So if we back out enough, you will get this very cool um, like battle map, almost a region map, where you can see that we have different regions. Uh, that we can eventually take over and everything like that get some more resources and stuff like that but let's go ahead and zoom into our little region the uh that word right there <laughs> so next to us immediately we have oh good we have some wild animals here that we can go ahead and hunt and get some meat and hides from to make some clothing we have a nice stone deposit over here not a rich one if you notice this has a crown on top of the clay deposit that is a rich deposit so those will uh, last a long long time um what else we have berries we have berries way off in the distance there that's fine we'll figure that out um very nice okay so we have a good little starting area uh, for our village so first things first why don't we go to our road tool here roads are free in this game so we can just kind of make as many as we want to. Also, a nice thing, you see the um, the topographical lines show up. So you can see if you're on top of, well, like we're on top of a hill right now, which is kind of cool for uh, visuals. And that comes into play later for combat. Uh, but again, we're not worrying about combat in this quick playthrough here. But um, So anyways, let's get a road kind of leading into our place. We have a little one leading right there. Uh, we're eventually going to want to get back over here towards the berries. So why don't we just have this road extend out over this way so we're gonna have it go straight through almost down the hill just a little bit we'll click right there and we'll keep this going and we'll lead this around the animals a little bit and we're gonna hold control and I'm gonna do my 
wheel on my mouse, so that does the road curvature. And you can see here we can kind of make the roads a little bit precise how we would like it, right? So I want a nice little curve going around this like that. There we go. That's pretty good. And then let's lead this road all the way, just shooting towards the uh, berries. And then we'll go ahead and construct. There we go. Can't see it too well, but I promise you it is there if we zoom way down in. You know what? There was another road uh, leading through here. There you go. Nice, nice. I love the graphics of this game. That is the big, big selling point for me. It is such an ambient and just great looking game. So, all right, we have our kind of our country main road shooting out towards that way. Let's get another road uh, going kind of a cross section. And we'll go straight towards this little tree patch here. I did not plan any of this ahead of time. You can kind of tell a little bit. So we are all, we're building this in real time together here. All right, so we have a little uh, cross section here. Let's go ahead and go into our construction now. I like that for our base roads. And here's all of our different categories. We're gonna start with the uh, gathering category, get some of our basic gathering needs set up here. So first thing I like to do is the logging camp. And as it sounds, the logging camp is gonna go ahead and chop down some trees for us, which we need uh, timber and logs as uh, for a lot of things, right? A lot, a lot of things. So let's set this up not too far away because I do think about travel distance for our uh, villagers and they're going to be set up in this area here. So why don't we set this up right about here. We're going to uproot one tree to construct that. Our villagers are going to have to go over there and construct that. So we'll um, once we hit unpause, we'll see them head over that way. Let's also set up the hunting camp because we have the uh, animals right here, right? So let's go ahead and set up the hum hunting camp right next to them if we can and we'll do right there we're not taking down any trees i don't think it really matters if you take down trees when you build i just personally if i don't have to i won't <laughs> um also let's set up the forager hut um we'll put that right in the middle of our like village and the berries here so that again they're not like walking an incredible amount of distance we'll set that up right there nice what else here? We're going to need some uh, firewood. So this is the Woodcutter's Lodge. They're going to take the timber and the trees that our, wood, our, uh, that our uh, timber people do, and they're going to take those and turn them into firewood. So we'll put that right across from... There we go. We're going to take out one tree right across from the hunting camp and the uh, logging camp. There, I couldn't think of the word for it. <laughs> uh, very good. So that's a good base start for... Uh, building there and then let's go ahead and also we'll go over to the residential area and let's put our first uh, houses our first uh, burgages I think they're called burgage I might be pronouncing that uh, wrong but uh, let's go ahead and put our first ones and this is I love this aspect of the game if y'all haven't seen this we'll go through the first uh, few houses kind of slowly um, but yeah uh, let's check out how the builder works for the houses here so we'll start with our first point you get four points that you get to uh, plop down. And there's some snap points to the road. You kind of see these little white dots there. It kind of snaps to uh, the road. So let's have our first point here. Now the first two points that you do are gonna be the direction of your houses. So you can see here we have this kind of long arrow uh, pointing towards our road here and it kind of extends and des um, gets smaller as we move our mouse around. So that's gonna be where the houses face. So let's click the point right there so we're not going too too big and then we'll go well let's see if we can we're not gonna be able to build this we don't have enough uh wood i just noticed so we got to build kind of smaller houses to start us off with and that is fine so that's going to cost two right there so let's go down just a little bit more let's extend out extend out that's going to cost four right there okay so it's that's as much wood as we have Four. Perfect. And this is kind of fun because as you see with this one, we get a little uh, hammer, a little construction bit right here. Um, if we take that on... Um, oops, hit the wrong button. Um, but yeah, if you see that, that's an extension plot, so we can actually... Um, you'll, I'll show you after we build it. So that's one of my favorite things about the uh, builder here. But um, if we hit the plus and minus like I did before, we can reduce the number of plot divisions that we have. So right now we have two houses going on this. If we go down, we'll just have the one house. 
and uh, you'll see that it switched over to uh, we don't have the plot extension anymore but we do have this uh, house with a plus on it so that means that we can add more people to live in this house um, eventually you can expand uh, that out so there's two different expansions that you can do the add people to it and then the uh, extension for and you can actually have both of those if you do the plot just right which we did not so I actually would like to get the plot just right for that if we can afford it So I was able to figure out a cool little design here to um, finagle two houses in here, both with um, both of the extension and house upgrade or a house extension uh, plots. So we'll start with just the two. Overall, we have five people that we need to um, house. But again, with the house extension uh, plots, I think we can put in um, kind of a lot of people into one house. So uh, let's go ahead and unpause the game and our villagers, which are right over here, they're going to get to work right away. And again, this is kind of my favorite part, just seeing our villagers going off and doing their things. If we hit control C, that'll go into like a cinematic mode here. Get these really fun views of our villagers off doing their things, right? So they're off constructing that way. Another fun thing about this game that you gotta consider is the livestock. So you see here we have our ox off to build. They are off to help build the plots and everything. So they're gonna take like logs and other heavy things and transport them to our um, to our build sites and everything. So yeah, very, very, I love that aspect. There you go, actually right there. He's dragging some logs from our store room right now. And they're heading off into the woods probably to build the logging camp first. So yeah, they are off and running, but let's go ahead and speed up the time a little bit. Uh, personally, uh, this might help some of you. Um, as of right now, I'm not sure that there is a fast forward hotkey, um, but I did set up a hotkey for myself, which is tab and caps lock just over here. So if I hit tab twice, that speeds up the time, hit caps lock twice, that speeds down or, you know, de uh, descends the time and everything. So, uh, but yeah, if you go into your uh, settings and your controls, uh, the key bindings, like I said, I kind of um, went ahead and messed with that a little bit because I like to have a hotkey real quick to be able to speed up and slow things down. So let's go ahead and yeah, speed things up for a little while and let things get constructed. As I say that, as I was blabbing there, <laughs> the construction camp is finished. Let's head over to that, which is gonna be was right on this road somewhere, right? It's a little bit hard to see. Let's see, there it is, hunting camp. So with this, if you play similar games like this, like Banished or Ostrieve or um, other settlement games, you will uh, be familiar with this. But if not, uh, you have to assign families to workstations. So if we go in the upper left-hand corner up here, uh, you will see unassigned and assigned. So we have five families, not five people, five families living with us at the moment. And each family consists of multiple people, um, as it sounds there. So um, unassigned families, we need to assign them to our industries and everything like that. So if we assign a family here, now we have, uh, if we go to people, you'll see that now we have, was it Erhart and Heinz. Uh, they are both working here and hunting. So there you go. So don't forget to assign people uh, to your industry so that they work. And if we zoom way down in here, you'll see now that our hunting camp is up and going. And um, I think our two hunters are out hunting away. It'd actually be kind of fun to see them doing their thing, right? There they go. Getting down, getting ready to go hunt some deer. Let's see if they get it. Summer's coming soon, and soon the beating sun. The little conversations they have are great too. The voice acting is great in this game. Here he goes. Got him, did you see that? What a hit. <laughs> Let's see if the other guy gets him. And then they go over here, they'll skin them and everything and get the meat hides and we are on our way folks so all right yeah let's go ahead and like i said we'll speed up the time get some uh, let some things get constructed our ox have to drag supplies all the way over this way we are getting some exposed goods warnings it's because we don't have any storage quite yet we will definitely get there though kind of like to get a baseline set up right a few the hunting camp wants a market square. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. That doesn't cost us much at all, if anything. So the next thing that we want to go ahead and set up is our marketplace. You just saw the little thing here. Family requests more market area for their stall, the hunting camp. Uh, so yeah, our people, when they hunt, when they make firewood, when they make anything, uh, they're going to need a marketplace stall 
to sell their goods, basically. So I want to set that up right here. I think this is a perfect little crossroads to have our market. It sets up very, very similarly to how we did the, uh, the houses. So let's go ahead and set up our plots here. We'll make a nice square. As I'm making this, this does snap a little bit. It doesn't have like a full on snap, snap, snap feature, um, but there is a little bit of a snap, so you kind of can get a pretty close, um, perfect square and everything. All right, there we go. So that's going to make our market um, there. You can see we have market stall locations, 56 of them. So that's 56 separate stalls that people can come in and build. And that is the fun thing. When you build it, don't think that you did something wrong. We've just designated an area for our people to have a marketplace, essentially. So as they get their goods and everything, they will start to go over there and build their own uh, stalls and stuff. So if we click on the hunting camp, go to people, we'll probably see, um, this is hunting crafting. As we uh, speed this up, it'll probably say construction soon. And that means that they're going to go over to the marketplace. There we go, constructing. So Heinz is going to come over here. There we go. Heinz went ahead and... Constructed our first stall here, and then one of the family members will stay at the food stall, and uh, it'll be called peddling. They'll, you'll see um, town people who are peddling, and that means that they're in there, in here uh, selling their goods that they made and everything. So yeah, I love that aspect. I just I love seeing that aspect of it. <laughs> so we're speeding up the time here, letting some more things get built. I don't think anything else has been finished yet. Not quite yet. We are almost on the way to getting the logging camp under uh, finish. That is really important to get finished first. That and food are, are pretty dang important. So we will actually go in and uh, click on the construction here and up the priority to high because I do think that they are building the berry thing first. So we have run out of storage in our hunting camp. And that is because we need a granary and stuff like that. Which we will get to that very, very soon. Uh, we finished the logging camp. Let's go ahead and assign a family to the logging camp. They will go off and do that. And let's also get the woodcutter's lodge to high priority as well. So we can get that finished and get some firewood going. Roof, good sirs. Woodcutter's lodge is finished. Love to see it. Let's assign a family to that. So now you see, real quickly, we are running out of families to assign, right? So that's why you have to, in the beginning of the game, be a little uh, strategic with what you need to assign families to and what you don't and everything like that. So that's why I've uh, very specifically kind of just chosen a few different kind of buildings uh, to start us off. As we get more people um, immigrating into our area, uh, we'll definitely be able to up that and everything. And as far as immigration works, if you look at our approval rating here, uh, which is going down because we have homeless people, unfortunately, um, that needs to be above 50%. And then people will start to consider immigrating into your, uh, your area here. Um, and then you also have to have excess living space as well. You can see we're going to have plus two living space once these are finished up. Uh, we do have some people constructing here. Again, I love seeing these little moments of them like constructing and uh, just hanging out, just having interactions and everything. It's, it's such an ambient game to hang out with. Alright, we had another stall finished. The firewood stall has been built so people can come and buy their firewood. Looks like our house is well on its way, just about done, the first one here. As we speed up time really, really fast. Oh, the deer have come out into the middle of the uh, area. I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's fun. It's easy kill, guys. Easy kill. Check that doorway's width so that a cart can fit. And just about done. There we go. We have our first level one house is now finished. There we go. So um, if we click on this, click on the house real quick. There we go. We'll see some extensions and stuff that we can do. So uh, from right to left, we have the backyard extensions. Extensions add extra production functionality to the residential buildings. And this is like my favorite part of this. I, I just love this idea here. So if you go here, yeah, it's gonna bring up a whole big screen and you'll see, yeah, different things that we can add to their backyard. So we can add a vegetable garden, a chicken coop, goat shed, you know, eventually apple orchard, yada, yada, yada. There's so much that you can do, and not just farming. Uh, later on when they're level two, they can be workshops, 
um, you know, breweries. So yeah, there's a whole lot that we can do. So um, let's go ahead and we will um, do that to this one. So you have to be a little frugalist at the beginning because we only have 50 regional wealth right here. and We're not making any wealth at the moment. Uh, that comes when we trade later on. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and use some of that wealth uh, to make some gardens and stuff to help our food supply uh, down the road and everything. So let's do a vegetable garden. They will have to build that. We'll speed up the time here. It became really dreary out, didn't it? So that's another thing to consider as we're playing the game is you have a little right here we have the seasons. So we have spring, summer, autumn, winter, of course. Uh, right now we're in spring from March to May, which has frequent raining. Uh, seasonal deposits regrow, meaning those berries that we saw earlier. There you go. They are growing uh, right now. So it's very, very exciting to see. It will be even better when we get our... Where did I put that? Forager hut up and go. Oh, the forager hut is up and going. I missed that completely. Whoops. Um, that's all right. So we have um, all of our different industries up and going now. Uh, now we're just waiting for the houses to be built. We need to get a few more logs or, uh, excuse me, timber so that we can build some more houses. But yeah, we are well on our way doing some good here. So let's go ahead and we'll do some more things here. Let's expand the living space. Doubles the maximum family count for this uh, burgage plot. So let's go ahead and do that. And we need some more wood. But yeah, that's going to double the uh, family size there. So originally the family size is, I think, just the one. Yeah, one out of one. So we'll be able to fit two families in here. Which then means we just need to build, like, really one more plot of burgage. And we'll get all of our people um, housed and good to go. So let's speed it up here again. While we're doing that, we'll add in another vegetable garden. Or should we do chickens? You know, let's do chickens. <laughs> well, actually, if we do vegetables, I think we can get three vegetables to one and two. That's all right. We want some eggs because, yeah, each one does different things, obviously. Chickens make some eggs for us. We want some eggs. All right. Speed up the time here as they continue building. Exposed stocks are getting soaked. Oh, no, that's right. We do need to build some storage, don't we? Let's go to the logistics screen here. Go to the granary. We'll build the granary kind of in the middle here. Oh, we don't have enough goods. Yep, we're almost to having enough goods. We need one more timber. Uh, but kind of close to the forager hut. And I believe the uh, the hunting lodge as well. I think both of those can be stored in the granary. So we'll put that right there. There we go. Let that get built. So that's going to hold all of our food and stuff like that. The other storage that we can do is the storehouse which is going to store everything else like logs and firewood and all that stuff we have a construction upgrade complete for the burgage here so they went ahead and uh, doubled the size of how many people can live there so now we have two out of two families let's see if we can't do the same we almost can do the same thing over there once we get one more timber there we go so we had a family member move in over there just saw the little plus sign And we'll extend, expand the living space here. And then once our timber gets up to probably two or three, because these each cost two, so yeah, uh, two, we can expand out one more plot size, and then that should house all of our current people. But we don't want to stop there, right? We want to keep going and get more people uh, moving in here so we can assign more families to work there. So here we have our little chickens. Kind of check them out with their little chicken coops. Look at them move around doing this little chicken thing. <laughs> Here they are farming. See little crops starting to come up, little vegetables. Speed up the time here again as they are constructing on the granary. All right, how many logs do we have? We have one timber. That's something else we need to think about, guiding an ox. we got to think about buying some more livestock, because we just have the one oxen running its head off right now, all over the place, trying to uh, do everything. You know, drag trees from the logging camp, do construction, just everything it's doing right now. Uh, speaking of that, there is a hitching post that comes with uh, your first settlement here, and that is where the oxen and horse and everything do um, stay when they're not doing anything. So let's actually move this closer into town. Maybe put it right... Actually, I did like that right there. That's perfect. And it does need to get constructed, so let's change the priority to high so that gets constructed right away. Don't want our 
oxen or anything without a uh, place to hang out. Alright, he dropped off some more logs right there to our first plot. So they should be able to finish up there. There we go. Alright, how much logs do we have? We have two timber. We should be able to build the house like we did before. I think it was two spaces out. It might have been three. We'll see here. Nope, that's perfect. And construct that. And that'll be good for our uh, homeless factor, right? So we have our homelessness factor um, all figured out by springtime. Very important to get your people housed uh, almost right away. That, firewood, and food. Boom, boom, boom. You want to get all that ready to go by winter time, or else people will start to abandon you, and you don't want that at all. So let's speed up the time again here. Things do move a little bit slow, but I do appreciate that. Because, again, you can kind of take this time to just... If you want to hang out with your villagers, see what they're up to, watch them do their day-to-day, -day, which, again, that, that is like most of this game for me, is just hanging out with the villagers, seeing them do their day-to-day. -day. It is just so ambient to, to hang out. <laughs> There's this guy hanging out, bringing his, uh, his fresh kill up to the marketplace. Again, it's a little bit of a walk, so the logistics of it don't quite make sense at the moment, um, but as the village expands and I can see it going out this way and you know basically taking up this entire plot right here it will start to bridge the gap of the logistics of the, how much distance they have to uh, really go and everything I mean thinking about it in the meantime because we can move this as I was saying that out loud it's like well why don't we have this like right here for the moment <laughs> you don't want to build this in the red you can see overlaps animal habitat will cause migration as your village expands towards the animals and everything they will migrate away they will go farther into the woods um, and all that so that is something to consider you know I am gonna do that too I'm gonna move that right on the outside of this let's have this be the highest priority then they don't have to walk that far at all there we go nice I think we have to, yep, we have to reassign your villagers, though, too soon. So remember that, if you do move something that has villagers attached to it, uh, they will have to, uh, unfortunately, get reassigned back to it. All right, so we had our last plot figured out. There you go. Now we have no more uh, worries of homelessness. Let's go ahead and expand the... Uh, we can't do anything with the backyard because we don't have enough money for it, but we will expand the living space because then they'll have a plus one. We have a new family that can move in. Because yeah, right now we have just the one, and you'll notice I've, I'm leaving one unassigned family. Uh, that's because without assignment, um, the families will be construction. Uh, they'll go around and build everything. So if you don't have any unassigned families, uh, nothing will get built, basically. So I have to kind of give and take with that every so often. Speed up the game again here as we are building out the, uh, the granary. Hopefully they are getting out here now that everything is kind of taking care of stocks damaged by the weather oh no yeah we gotta get get stuff built here right maybe we can get the storeroom built as well or storehouse excuse me so these have to be um, supplied with people as well which is why I've kind of held off doing it but I do think if they don't have people assigned to them that people uh, you can still have storage happening. I'm not quite sure on that. We're going to find out together in this episode. Uh, we'll put the storehouse. It needs to be kind of close to over here. We will do that right there. Right where the woodcutters work. Because they will have the logs and firewood stored right there. See, when you have people assigned to the granary and storehouse, they will go out and seek out supplies that need to be uh, stored and everything. So like the right here, these supplies of rocks that are just sitting there, they'll go collect those. Um, anything like that, they'll go out and collect those and bring them to the storehouse so they're not just exposed to the elements. Here we go. Granary is under construction, just about done here. Oh, y'all, you are so close. Just, just, you just need to hammer in like one nail. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always funny whenever that happens with buildings. It's like, just just one more. Oh, they built the storehouse beforehand. That's funny. The thing that we put down way earlier, they were like, yeah, let's do that first. All right, so, yeah, again, we can't assign anyone to this. But I am curious if the industries themselves will have people, like, go and um, store things uh, just automatically. It looks like they do. Okay, so that is nice to know. 
that from like the fire or the woodcutter's lodge and all that, they will just go and store things. If you have people assigned to them though, then they will go out and seek those things. So, all right, good, good stuff. All right, so let's see the, uh, everything seems to be working pretty well. Let's take an overview of our thing here. If we hover over this barrel here, this has a number of months before supplies run out. So we have five months of food and 14 months of uh, firewood. So yeah, we're doing very, very well at the moment. We're doing very, very well. Uh, so really, yeah, we can just speed up the time for a little bit here because we need some more uh, people to move in, uh, which we have seven timber, which that's starting to kind of be a little bit there. Let's see if we can't construct a lot of houses because we've been doing just one plot at a time, but I love being able to uh, make big plots of houses and everything. So let's kind of do a fun, funky little design here. We'll see how much it costs. So... Remember our first two plots are the front of the house. Oh, I thought it was gonna be able to kind of conform to that, but it's not. All right, let's bring it to here. I have an idea about the road. And we'll have this next plot come right down to here, almost perpendicular to here. Straight across, it did snap right there, so that must be right across, and right there, bam! Oh, I love how that looks, right? And then we're gonna take the road, and we'll we'll have it line up straight across these here, so it doesn't do this little curve thing here. Uh, but yeah, I really like how that looks. We're gonna get four new plots, or, let's see, all of them can do the extension. Three out of the four can do the additional people living there, but if we reduce down the plot divisions, we can get three. Maybe six, this be two, four, six, seven. Okay, so we'll get more people if we do it this way, obviously. I kind of like how this looks, too. That's the kind of thing, too, is that you can think of the aesthetics of it, right? So, I mean, if you want to, you can just have one giant farm plot right here, which is one house. Uh, but since we're kind of in the quote-unquote, like, downtown area that I'm perceiving later on, I do want to kind of go for more, maxim maximize the amount of people that we have living down here. So, uh, let's go ahead and we'll do that same thing with the row. We'll hold Alt and then click. That's going to remove the road right there. We'll pause the game. And we'll connect this, connect each house to the road, and then bring this back down. Let's see if we can't get like a little curvy curve stuff going on. Eh, not really. Alright, construct that. And actually, I'm going to take out this road too. We'll re redo this and have it connect back up right here. Connect, connect, connect. Connect, and where's that road? Oh, did I take out the whole thing? Oopsie. <laughs> I took out the whole road. That's all right. Very easy to build roads in this game. Connected, connected. See, so yeah, I am purposely clicking on each of those yellow little dots there for the buildings. Because uh, then if we click on the building and go to advanced, you'll see connected to the road network right here. So that is important to have them all connected to the... Uh, road network there so very nice yeah i like how that's gonna turn out it's going to speed up the time we have moved into uh summertime and we are geared up and looking very good to head into winter even without doing farms i think that might be a lot of people's mistakes is that you um rush to do farms that also might be my mistake to not rush into farms but i found that even the first few years of the game i have not had to use farming at all um it is a very, very nice thing to have, especially as your populations boom. Uh, the the wild animals and the berries, they can kind of suffice for smaller villages and everything. But once you start to get into a lot, a lot of people, that's when the farms do uh, start to matter. But at the beginning of the game, I think you almost use more people to supply the farms than is really worth the effort and everything when you have the berries and the animals. I'd rather almost have more people hunting and foraging than I would assign to a farm right away. Again, I don't know if that's the best way, but that's what's worked for me uh, so far. So here we go, starting to get some new houses uh, built here. We should start to see some new people come in because yeah, our uh, approval rating is way up there, or not way up there, but starting to go uh, way up there. So again, we should start to hopefully see some people move in. So exposed goods. Yes, we do. We have some stone that is still exposed. I would like to get that 
put away just so we don't have <laughs> that right there. You will see I, I have ignored this uh, for this episode, but new mercenary companies available. Uh, there is the army screen and everything where we can uh, check out all this. We'll do this in future uh, series, uh, but yeah, you can hire mercenaries if you have the uh, money for that. I know I went over that extremely quick, but again, in future series we will cover a lot more in depth with the um, armies and uh, battles and everything because it is a lot of fun to do that. Hey, there we go. A new family started moving in to our new plot. And you'll see we have a new unassigned uh, family. So let's go ahead and go over to um, the storehouse and we will assign a family there. And there you go. Our brand new family. They they just moved in for their first hour or two and everyone's like, now get to work. <laughs> All right, so they're going to go gather the supplies. There they go. They're going to take the supplies that are just hanging out, getting exposed to the weather, and they will bring them in. And I believe they go to the different industries as well and collect all of the different resources and everything. Yeah, transporting. They, yeah, they go to all the industries and just transport everything so they don't have to uh, worry about it themselves. There we go. Finally got that red little dot away. Perfect, perfect. We'll just keep waiting for more people to move in as we construct these... Uh, plots. We'll expand the plots as well. Uh, next thing that we're going to want to worry about, I believe, though, as they're doing that, is um, let's see, that's our farming tab. Again, we're not going to worry about that quite yet. We will overall, though. Industry tab, we will need to worry about this soon. Especially with the uh, tannery. That's going to take the hides that we've been building, and they'll turn it into leather. Uh, but let's keep moving down the tab line here to trade. I think that's our next bet here is to make a trading post as we get more people moving in here so let's build our trading post again kind of in the quote unquote like downtown area um let's actually first i want to build a road on the side of our market here there we go just to kind of keep some separation between the two and we'll build our trading post right bang there all right, so yeah, that is where we're going to make our money. And eventually, as I was uh, talking about it earlier at the beginning of the game, our deposits and stuff. Once we run out of deposits, like the iron deposit, we only have 85. That stinks. Uh, so you can do two things. You can go out and get these new areas, which we might do, especially if we have a rich iron deposit and stuff. Um, or you can trade for them. And that's what I've done a lot of in the past is trading. Uh, so you can make a bunch of money doing that and then turn that money back into like, hey, I need that thing. <laughs> we got a new family, so we can go ahead and assign them to the uh, granary. Awesome. And they should immediately start to... Oh, they're just waiting. There is nothing for them to do at the moment. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. And let's see. All. Oh, wow. These are almost all built up pretty much. So once those are done, we're going to expand out the living spaces for those and uh, get a whole bunch of people moving in here. Settlement level increased. All right, everyone, we have met the first development point here. So if we go up here and click, this will bring us to our tech tree, essentially, or our development tree. So there's a lot of different options that we can do. They're all in different categories. This is like, I think you're farming. Oh, these two are kind of like farming and stuff like that this is uh trade this is uh like war um and also like uh charcoal burning and deep mining so yeah the, each one has its own little category going on for us though i have found that i like to do um off to the left hand side first uh for what we're doing specifically because it has to do a lot with the trapping uh, forest management, which doubles the capacity of all the berry deposits, and then also beekeeping, which means we can build an apiary. Uh, but I think for us, since we have the um, the hunters like so close to our village, and I think they are really the big driving force for our food, let's do the trapping, which enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which give a passive income of meat. Love that. I think that's really, really uh, cool there. So also careful when you're, uh, you're in the development tree. There is no confirm. It's just you click on it, it's going to do it. <laughs> I do think that would be nice if you can get like a like an are you sure or like confirm or something like that uh, before just clicking on the button and it's just like, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now we have trapping, so we'll get a lot more food coming in, which we are doing very well, uh, very good with our food at the moment. We have some of our plots getting built on here. Let's expand the living space out. We have a bunch of timber, don't we? Yeah, we have 18 timber now. 
So that's great. Yeah, we can just keep expanding these plots out. We are running into August, getting into, let's see, uh, late summer. Finish the plot. We'll expand out the living space. We are just setting ourselves up for some good success in the next year. Uh, this next coming year after winter, because I do think we're going to be okay for winter time, we should be able to uh, get farming going kind of right away, I think. Because, yeah, we are setting ourselves up for some goodness here. I'll slow it down here. Um, speaking of the settlement level, so current settlement level, we are at small village. Each level gets you a development point that you can use to specialize your town and make it more efficient like we just did. Uh, so next uh, settlement level, we are looking to do um, one more level one or higher um, plot, uh, burgage plot, and then we also need two level, uh, level twos. So if we click on our plots here, you'll see uh, we have a upgrade to level two button here. We haven't met the requirements. We have no water access, oops, uh, no church, and no clothing. Well, one of those we can do right now. I just straight up forgot about it. If you go to the residential tab, uh, there is, yep, right next to here, we have the well. And yes, this is something I did forget to look at before settling. Luckily, uh, we we got lucky with where the placement is. But yeah, we have these underground um, like aquifers or underground rivers or something like that where uh, that's the only place you can build your wells. So again, luckily we have one pretty dang close to the downtown area right there. And then uh, later on, once we expand this way, we'll probably build another one uh, right there. We almost need to be mindful of that you know what i'm just gonna build it right now because i'll totally forget about that later on uh cool so yeah like we were looking at uh that'll take care of the amenities um area here and then so then we're gonna need the um food or uh, excuse me the clothing and church so church if we go here that's under the residential tab as well uh we're gonna need 20 um, of those middle things, <laughs> which I believe are planks. Yeah, saw pit. We have to build a saw pit here um, that turns timber into planks. So something to consider to get the uh, church. So we let the end of summer into early autumn play through there and we finished all of our uh, plots here, all the expansion plots and everything. So we are really looking um, up for how many people we can get in here, how many families. So we have zero out of two here. I think this one also has zero out of two. This has one out of two. So yeah, as our um, approval rating keeps going up, hopefully uh, we can get some more uh, people in. So we also finished up the trading posts, our two wells as well. So uh, we are good there. Let's go to the trading post though and check out what we can do here. So let's assign a family, one of our new families we had. Uh, we'll go to, let's see, trade. And what do we have extra of? And what are we making a lot of that we can kind of part with? Firewood. Yeah, we can do firewood. I think that's Probably, right now, the only thing. Uh, unless we can do meat. We actually don't have any meat. Interesting. I thought we were doing really good on all that stuff. Oh, you know why? Because it's all in the food stall and everything. So, not a big deal. But yeah, firewood. We are doing uh, very good with that. I don't know that we can get a lot of money for that. Uh, but that's fine. Yeah, we can get two. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so, let's go ahead and export. <coughs> oh, excuse me export our firewood and we'll tell it that we want to export uh once we have over let's say a hundred uh let's do 80 we're a small encampment right now we have what it's like 22 months of firewood reserve so yeah anything over 80 um that'll be sold off so let's go ahead and we'll leave that there um, our people should now go ahead and yeah, they're stocking goods for sale and then we'll have uh, traders automatically come through here and uh, do their thing and hopefully get some more uh, regional wealth going. Uh, but yeah, we need to consider that moving forward that uh, yeah, we need to uh, basically have a surplus of stuff, right? And start selling some stuff off later on so we can get some more money. Uh, speaking of that, though, let's go to industry. And now that we are getting some more people uh, moving in, before winter hits, I'd really like to get the tannery uh, built here to get some hides and some clothing uh, good to go. So let's go ahead, and since that is part of the uh, hunter area a little bit, let's put that right down uh, this way, right there. Sounds good. 
So yeah, they will also make a stall once this is all built up and everything. Uh, the other well is finished. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, once this is all built up, the tannery, they'll um, make a new stall and sell some clothing in the marketplace. That'll be fun. Look at all the people coming over here, leveling out the land. <laughs> And it looks like we had our first little trading post um, transaction there. We made one regional wealth. Way to go. Hey, that's that's a step, right? <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Uh, so I think it was 15 for the vegetable garden and 20 for the chickens. How much was is it for the... Because we can afford another one. Oh, it was 25 for the goat shed. Because, uh, yeah, these first three are the only ones we can do for level ones. Uh, and the goat, what do the goats do again? I don't really remember using those too much. The goat sheds, they provide a passive yield of hides. Oh, very nice. Okay. Um, so those will also need to go down to the tannery. And, uh, yeah, they can make uh, make some water out of those. All right, let's speed up the time as we get the tannery built here. We don't have a family at the moment uh, to supply it. But I think what we're going to do is take the family off of construction. Because this should be, except for... Yeah, for now, this should be the last thing that we want to construct for this year. I don't know that we're going to be able to get the saw pit or the church built before winter time. Not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, getting the tannery good and done, that should be good stuff there. Winter is approaching. Here it comes. I think we are good and ready. There we go, got the tannery done. Let's go ahead and we will assign a family to that. Speed up the time. Let's see. Yep, they're going to go off and transport from the storeroom, I believe. Or the storehouse. Because that has hides in it over there, yeah. Now, I almost want to take the storehouse and put it over here. <laughs> I'm, like, reconsidering all of my first logistical choices. New family moved in. Started moving in. Okay, good stuff. Hey, look at that. We got 10 there. Nice. They bought all of the wood. Perfect. So that means we can go through and do a few things here. Let's add... You know, let's do the goats, right? Yeah, heck it. Let's do the goat shit. <laughs> that was a great noise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these, these first three plots, they have one of everything. There we go. And then, is that a goat? There's our goat dude. What's up, man? I think I totally missed this my first few playthroughs. I don't remember doing the goats at all. <laughs> That's freaking fantastic. So, they're, yeah, they'll make uh, hides. It's kind of interesting that they don't make meat or, like, milk as well, right? Goat milk? Yeah. But meat would be kind of a cool thing uh, to kind of do a side thing for that. Not just hides, but uh, meat as well. How much gold do we have? So we kind of wasted it, or not wasted it, spent it all there. We've got ten more. Look at that. That trading is coming in the clutch. So yeah, if you don't have anything to trade and you have a lot of firewood, that firewood is uh, helping out a lot. Let's go ahead and do a vegetable garden right here. A little late in the year for them to do anything substantial with it. I do believe that the chickens, on the other hand, they can... Oh, we have clothing supply match. Now we just need a... Uh, we just need the church. Wow, we're pretty close. Uh, but anyways, um, the chickens, I believe they lay eggs all year, which would make a lot of sense while the... Uh, farms, you know, those are obviously during the summer and everything. So, hey, speaking of, we should see them start to pick out some of the vegetables and stuff here soon, you'd think. Because they were in autumn, harvesting, plowing, and sowing of crops. Yeah, so you'd think you, they would come in here and do that pretty soon. Oh no, they're actually sowing their field. <laughs> no, stop! Tell them to stop! <laughs> You're not going to be able to grow anything! Oh, that's a bummer. All right, so how are we looking as far as supplies go? Yeah, we have all the supplies in the world. We have all of the fuel, and food is good, too. Six months, it would be nice to get that up a little bit more, but I think we're looking pretty good going into the winter. That's just kind of the theme. We have uh, really set ourselves up for, uh, in my opinion, some success here. And I do like the way it looks now. Compared to this, the way the grass is and everything look at the end of uh, summer and beginning of autumn. See, everything's kind of like yellowed out, kind of dried out, all the leaves change color. It's such a drastic difference from when we started the game in spring, uh, from that lush green, you know, uh, rainy bit and everything like that. Oh, you know what, before we uh, finish up this little thing, because we are getting close to that, one last thing we got to do is the visit mode, which is my favorite mode. I think it's just so cool. But yeah, we can take a little walk around our, uh, our village. What's up, pal? How you doing? You liking the village? You like my cape? I have a cape. 
You don't have a cape. I like that hat though. Maybe yeah, I'll just take a little walk around here, see how everyone's doing. You get some really cool views down here, right? There we go, here's our market. Got our trader over that way. Can't wait for the market to fill out a lot more. It's very sparse right now, but as it uh, fills out, there's going to be a bunch of stalls all through here. It'll look really, really nice. What are you selling? Don't be shy, good sirs and ladies. You bet. I'll take one firewood and one cloth, please. Nice. Yeah, I love that little mode there. We'll have to keep doing that uh, once the episode take a walk around our, our village, right? All right, let's speed it up here some more. Approval rating is at 65%. I believe it's gone up pretty good uh, pretty good amount there. That's, that's awesome. So since we uh, do have the extra resources right now, let's um, we don't have the extra people, but we will put down the saw pit in the meantime. Kind of a why not, I guess, you know? We'll just put that right... Actually, right next door. So when we do get the extra person, we can uh, go ahead and assign him to that. And we also are um, losing out... As you can see here, you can see where our woodcutters are, right? Uh, so that is something else to consider that we can't supply at the moment, but the Forester's Hut. Um, I don't worry about this for the first part, because again, we're just worried about cutting down trees and getting as many trees as we can. But now that we're starting to make a pretty good dent, uh, let's put down the Forester's Hut. And um, once that gets built, we can have people start to resupply the area that we've uh, taken out here. Alright, we are in December. We are officially into winter. We will wait for the first snowfall to come. Um, but, yeah, we are looking to probably start to wrap up the episode. We got a new food stall, but that's from our vegetable garden here. Because yeah, you can have multiple vendors, multiple stalls. So we have, I think, two, two food stalls now. We'll eventually get a lot, a lot more. The saw pit is finished. And actually, we have an additional uh, family that's moved in here. So let's take someone and move them there. Start to get some uh, saw pits. Uh, made another firewood stall. Yeah, we're getting a lot of stuff built here now. Now things are coming together, right? Now it's going. So again, we're going to wait for the first winter and then we will head out. But I'm glad we got that saw pit up and going. If we get some planks made, that would be amazing. I really didn't think that we would be able to... Forester's Hut's ready. Nice. I didn't think we'd get anywhere near getting ready to uh, get the church built. And we're not going to be able to because there's the first snowfall. I love how it looks during the uh, the snow though, right? It's almost like a... It's almost creepy looking. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there you go. So hey, I think we did a real... Whoa, saving finish. We are way out there now. Um, but yeah, really good start to our village, everyone. Let me know what you think down below. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue this into our year two, and hopefully we survive the winter. I think we're going to be okay, um, but yeah, we are uh, we are nice and set up there for our year two, and hopefully expand out our settlement. So hey, thanks so much, everyone, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button. It does help out the uh, video a whole bunch. Also, comment down below your favorite part of Manor Lords. What are you most excited for about it? Uh, what are you excited for about our village here? We have a lot of fun stuff going on. And uh, yeah, just let me know what you are thinking down below there. So hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Appreciate you as always. Until the next episode of Manor Lords, have a good one.